Wonder Hussy here, coming to you today from the fabulous roadside town of Jean, Nevada. Jean is another one of those little towns you pass through on the side of Interstate 15 on your way from Los Angeles to Las Vegas that let you know you're almost in Vegas. By the time you get to Jean, you've already passed through the border town of Prim, where I made a video last week. And then when you get to Jean, you know that, oh gosh, you're so close to Vegas, you can taste it. You can smell it. Ugh. So I don't know why anybody would stop and gamble in Jean when you're only another 30 miles to go from the real Vegas, but apparently people do, or well, they used to. They might still do. I don't know. I'm here to find out. So let's go take a look around. Okay, surprisingly, Jean is actually a real town as evidenced by the fact that there's an actual, honest-to-goodness U.S. post office here. Jean, Nevada, zip code 89019. Far out. And here I thought Jean was just a couple of casinos and a truck stop. <laughs> well, actually, according to what I read on Wikipedia, Jean has the distinction of being the least populated town in America. Okay, uh, I googled least populated town in America to see if I could confirm that because, you know, Wikipedia. And apparently, well, there's some town in Nebraska that only has one resident, and so that always gets the top spot on the least populated towns in America list. But that's not actually accurate because Gene has zero residents. Okay, it's what's called a commercial town, and I guess that just means, well, there's no residences here. It's all just businesses, you know, casinos and truck stops and... Well, we'll get into all of that in a minute. But I feel like it's unfair that this town in Nebraska gets the title of least populated town in America when it rightly belongs to little zero population Jean. You know, Jean actually has quite a bit going on for a zero population town. Uh, aside from the post office, there's also a highway patrol substation, a prison, a firehouse, a justice court, and there's even an airport here in Jean. An airport in Jean, Nevada. Now I've seen it all. And what's really cool is uh, well, right out next to the airport, there's a little picnic area with barbecue grills and a little table and some, well, some shade trees. It's winter, so I'm sure in the spring and summer there's plenty of shade, but it's right at the side of the runway, so you can watch all these cool little private planes take off and land. That's pretty cool, but I think the main thing this airport is used for is skydiving. Ah! I don't know if any of you have ever been skydiving, but I like taking chances and I like adventure, but skydiving, mm -mm. but apparently a lot of people like to do it and they all come out here to good old Jean, Nevada. Okay, so as if a post office, a highway patrol substation, a fire department, a justice court, and an airport weren't enough, there's even a Starbucks. What's interesting about this Starbucks is, <laughs> well, this is actually the site of an old uh, casino that used to be here. Now, if you used to drive from uh, LA to Vegas back in the 80s, 90s, up until around mm, 2008, you might remember a hotel called the Nevada Landing, and it was built to look like a big paddle wheel steamboat. Well, that sat right here where this Starbucks is going in. Now, unfortunately, I never did get a chance to visit the Nevada Landing when it was here, but I was reading about it online, and I guess even before the Nevada Landing was here, there was another casino called Pops Oasis that was here in like the mm, 60s, 70s, 80s. And if you guys remember a place called Pops Oasis, well, eventually they tore down Pops Oasis to put in the Nevada Landing, and when they put in the Nevada Landing, they took a bunch of old casino chips and gaming tokens from Pops Oasis and sprinkled them into the foundation of the Nevada Landing. So apparently, oh gosh, 10, 12, 13 years ago, when they tore down the Nevada Landing, a bunch of collectors came out here and started going through the dirt to see if they could find any of those old Pops Oasis gambling tokens, because I guess if you're a collector, those things are kind of valuable. And now that they're digging up all this ground again to put in this Starbucks, I wonder if they churned up any of those old Pops Oasis tokens. 
huh, maybe we should poke around and see what we find. Christmas towel. Plastic grapes. Some old plastic flowers for someone's roadside shrine. The ever popular piss jug. Ugh, I don't think I want to find any Pops Oasis tokens that bad. Let's move on to the next stop. Okay, so the Nevada Landing Casino might be no more, but there's still one casino in Jean. So let's go check that out. Okay, this is the Terribles Hotel and Casino. And I know you're probably wondering who in their right mind would name a hotel and casino Terribles. Well, it's the name of a chain of gas stations in Las Vegas. And I think the people that own all the gas stations actually run a couple casinos in Vegas and one in Searchlight too. But it used to be called the Gold Strike. And that's why it has that sort of rustic old western false storefront like facade and these old imitation ore carts out front on a little section of fake narrow gauge rail. And then there's these giant miners panning for gold out front, <laughs> one on each side of the driveway. Huh? I gotta get the number for his dentist. And then there's even a plaque put here by the E. Clampus Vitus Historical Society talking all about Jean, Nevada. Okay, according to the Clampers, uh, Jean was originally founded in 1904 as Good Springs Junction. And there's actually still a little ghost, semi ghost town by the name of Good Springs, about mm, 15 miles from here. And that's why the Justice Court was, if you noticed, called Jean and Good Springs. Anyway, founded in 1904 as a stop on the old San Pedro, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake Railroad. And it was named after the wife of uh, this guy who built a mercantile business and had a post office out here. So Jean Fail was the wife of this guy, George Fail, and that's who the town of Jean is named after. And then it goes on to talk about some of the historic mining in the area. And then down here, it talks about a guy named Peter A. Pop Simon, who created a motel, store, gas station, casino complex here called Pop's Oasis in 1947. It's the place I was just talking about where all the chips were in the foundation of the Nevada landing. Then in 1987, the Gold Strike Hotel and Gambling Hall opened, and well, that continues to serve the traveling public, according to this sign. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not sure this hotel's even open, but well, I'm certainly gonna go see what I can see. But before we do that, there's another Clampers plaque across the road here. Let's go check that out. Boy, I didn't realize this was such a historic area. Look at this, the Arrowhead Trail Highway. Wow, I never knew this, but apparently the first automobile road to connect Los Angeles and Las Vegas was called the Arrowhead Trail Highway. Planned, promoted, and built beginning in the 1920s, this was one of the named interstate highways of the Good Roads Movement. Well, I never heard of the Good Roads Movement, but it must have something to do with when they were first building all the interstate highways. Anyway, the Arrowhead Trail Highway eventually connected LA, across the desert to Vegas, and then north all the way to Salt Lake City. Can you imagine what a big deal it was back then to have a paved road all the way from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles? Then it says the road was later numbered Highway 91, and parts of that road are now Interstate 15. Interstate 15 just doesn't have the same romantic sound as Arrowhead Trail Highway. But look at this. The final route of the Arrowhead Trail Highway entered Nevada at today's Prim, and then followed a dirt route just south of today's I-15 to Gene, where it followed the old road to Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, it became Fifth Street and later Las Vegas Boulevard. You can still follow the 1920s route from Gene through Las Vegas by taking Las Vegas Boulevard from here. That's right, you can actually take Las Vegas Boulevard, the strip, all the way down here to Gene. And I actually made a video one time doing so. Uh, I started all the way down here, Vegas Boulevard uh, ends, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven miles down the road there, just kind of dead ends in the desert. And so I started there and I drove all the way down Las Vegas Boulevard, the entire 60 mile length of it. A lot of people probably don't realize that Las Vegas Boulevard, the strip is 60 miles long. It goes all the way through Vegas, comes out the north end, and then it ends up in the desert again. Uh, gosh, kind of near Overton, I guess. Anyway, I'll put the link to the video up there. It was a really interesting drive and well, golly, I was actually reading online when I was researching this video that 
Well, back in the day, I guess in the 60s, 70s, they used to come out here to this uh, lonely stretch of road and do drag racing. That's right, all the Vegas drag racers used to come out here. And I guess they even got like permission from the police to do it because, well, the police wanted them to find a safe place out of harm's way to do their drag racing. And they even got like, they put up regulation height guardrails according to the International Drag Racing Federation's rules. It was wild. Right back here, there used to be big old drag races. And then they built a drag strip in town. And, well, the kids quit coming out here to Jean. Okay, anyway, let's see if we can get inside this Terribles Hotel and Casino. Okay, I actually made a video in here about mm, four or five years ago when it was still the gold strike. I had a friend that was staying out here. And for some reason, he really wanted me to come out here and soak in the jacuzzi with him one night. And so I brought my camera with me and I shot kind of a really weird video just sort of wandering around I think I called it wandering around the eerily deserted gold strike hotel and casino and it was pretty weird back then oh yep look at that it's closed we can't go in uh that's okay I think I know a workaround okay I just drove around the back of the casino, huh. right where I started this video. And I think we can just go on through the bushes here and take a look around. See what I mean about that fake Wild West false storefront kind of facade? This was the Gold Strike Hotel and Casino. And then it was the Terribles Hotel and Casino. And you know, I'll bet you anything, it's just closed temporarily because of uh, COVID and it'll probably reopen again. But gosh, now that I think about it, it was so busted and weird in that video I made here uh, four or five years ago that, well, they might just plan on bulldozing the whole thing down to the ground. And if they do, well, maybe they'll put some gold strike casino chips in the foundation of whatever they put here. Okay, anyway, uh, wow, this place does look totally deserted. And it reminds me a lot of when I was poking around Buffalo Bills in Prim last week. I mean, here's the old fake Wild West storefronts, just like Disneyland. And then this, I guess, would have been the, uh, well, this would have been the main valet, the porte cochet as they call it. Look at this. Oh gosh, there's signs on the door. No trespassing, authorized personnel only. Well, I just want to look through the window if I can. Can you see anything? Oh, just more doors. Oh, this is so eerily deserted. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, what's this? The old Elko Firebell. According to the early history of Elko, Nevada, this curfew and firebell played a vital role for local citizenry. It often rang to signal disastrous fires, deaths of celebrities, and celebrations. Well, I don't see any bell. I guess there used to be, it says it was a beautiful bell cast out of 600 silver dollars mixed in with the brass and bronze to give the bell a more beautiful tone. Well, I bet it sounded amazing, but I don't know where it was and it certainly isn't here anymore. Wow, look at that. It's all caution taped off now. Nothing going down in the old Terribles Roadhouse, aka X Gold Strike. Some kind of lobby. Huh. It's interesting, like Buffalo Bills had those signs on the casino that said, all food has been removed from the pre premises, all alcohol has been removed from the premises, and all money or cash has been removed from the premises. This hotel doesn't have those signs up. So that makes me think that maybe this place is like kaput for good. You know, like the other place they were planning to reopen, or I think they are planning to reopen. So maybe that's why they had those signs up, just letting you know, yeah, we're gonna reopen again, but we took everything valuable out in the meantime. Here, they don't even bother with those signs. So it's like, gosh, I bet the whole place is just gutted in there. And wouldn't it be fun to go sneaking around inside? Unfortunately, I don't want to get arrested for trespassing, so I'm just gonna poke around the grounds. Oh wait, there's a car in the front valet. That must be the security guard. Ooh. I don't want to get in trouble. We better go back. Okay, so if you come to Jean nowadays, I guess you can't go in a casino, but you can still get gas. And yeah, there's this Terribles truck stop gas station right across the street from the Terribles Casino. But why would you go to just any old Chevron gas station when you can go to the world's largest Chevron right across the highway? That's right, 
the biggest chevron in the entire world. <laughs> right here in Little Jean, Nevada. Who'd have thunk? Uh, according to their advertising, they supposedly have 60 restrooms and 96 gas pumps. So I'm curious to see if this place is as big as they say. Huh? Look at this though. They really do have 96 gas pumps. That's a lot of gas pumps, but I'll bet you anything, it still gets crowded on one of those uh, busy holiday weekends when everyone's coming back from Vegas to LA. I'll bet you anything, all 96 of these pumps are occupied. Okay, let's go inside and see if there really are 60 restrooms. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Okay, wow, that place was like 5,000 times cooler than I was expecting it to be, oh my god. It kind of reminded me of the world's biggest truck stop in Iowa, where I made a video a couple years ago, and it was certainly almost the same size. I mean, it had everything. Any Vegas souvenir you could ever possibly want, any kind of candy you could ever possibly want. Any kind of monster energy drink you could ever possibly want. Any kind of Red Bull you could possibly want. Any kind of Jack Link's beef jerky. They had a whole Jack Link's beef jerky Sasquatch nook. I seriously could have spent probably half a day just in that convenience store. As it is, I just got a sack of nuts because I've got a few more places to check out before I leave Jean. Okay, I guess one of the reasons they had so much motorhead gear in that world's biggest chevron is, well, Gene has always sort of been a paradise for gearheads. I mean, in addition to the kids from Vegas that used to go drag racing out here, they also have a huge, really famous off-road race called the Mint 400, uh, right out here in the desert by Gene every spring. Somewhere out there in that beautiful desert. And then on this side of the highway, there's this weird kind of unassuming looking tent and shipping container business. And I think that's like Las Vegas off-road adventures. It's one of those deals where uh, you go rent like a Polaris Razor, or like a side-by-side -side, and some guy drives you around the desert and it's, well, it's supposed to be a lot of fun. That's right, the train tracks run right through Jean, and there's actually a historical marker right here talking about it. Okay, I didn't realize this, but right here in Jean is where the last spike of the railroad was driven. It says uh, it, on January 30th, 1905, near this site, workers drove the last spike that completed the railroad between Salt Lake City and Los Angeles. And apparently, Las Vegas owes its entire existence to this railroad because well there was a lot of water in Vegas back then and well they needed water to run those steam locomotives and so well Las Vegas became a natural railroad town and well the rest of that is history but I didn't realize that the last spike of that railroad was driven right here in Jean, Nevada. 
Okay, so in addition to being something of a paradise for gearheads and off-roaders, Jean is also kind of a paradise for photographers. Okay, there's a big dry lake bed just outside town where every Vegas-based photographer and model like to go out and do photo shoots and bikinis and high heels holding flowy fabrics blowing in the breeze. <laughs> uh, when I was working as a model, I may or may not have done about 1,003 photo shoots out there myself. And little known fact, when I was working as a nude model, I actually did my very first nude photo shoot right out here <laughs> in the desert outside Jean. But in addition to nude photo shoots and dry lake bed photo shoots, <laughs> there's another location in Jean that's very popular with cell phone photographers. And that is this giant, well, large scale land art piece called Seven Magic Mountains. Okay, Seven Magic Mountains. Uh, it was built by this, well, Swiss Italian artist named Ugo Randinone. I think that's how you pronounce it. And for whatever reason, this is like a super controversial piece of art. I guess a lot of people hate it. And then, well, presumably a lot of people love it because I'm here on a Thursday afternoon in late January and there's, well, there's a bunch of people here. Anyway, uh, according to a study done by the Reno Gazette Journal, over 2 million people have taken Instagram selfies in front of this art piece. And even Vogue magazine did a high fashion photo shoot here once. How about that? Right in the sleepy little town of Jean. Population zero, need I remind you? Ugh, sun's going down over the mountain. I guess I better do my own selfie quick. Ah, uh, it's too late, I missed the light. Anyway, I just think this is a really interesting art piece. Now, like I said, it's really controversial and a lot of people really hate it. Uh, I guess, well, maybe because they think it was publicly funded, which I should note it wasn't. It was all privately funded. I want to say it cost something like $2.5 million to make this thing. Basically the artist quarried these huge granite boulders and we'll go up close so you can see how big they are. He quarried these out of some local-ish quarry in the area and then he painted each one a different neon color. And then I guess there's like a giant, essentially like a giant rebar stake going down the middle of each stack to keep them from wobbling. But I guess something like 20% of that $2.5 million budget was spent on just getting the permitting because we are on public land, BLM, Bureau of Land Management Land. And so, well, if you want to put something like this on public land and then, you know, have a parking lot and all this uh, foot traffic and people coming in and littering and, you know, messing up the desert, well, you got to pay the government. And so, gosh, yeah, 20% of the budget just went towards that. And I guess they had to assume liability insurance in case anybody was stupid enough to try to climb one of these things. I mean, you know how people are. They'll try to climb anything. Okay, let's go cl up close and personal with some of these seven magic mountains. I don't know, man. I actually think this is super cool. <laughs> I mean, call me a communist, but I kind of like weird stuff like this in the desert. You know what I mean? Like, I love the minimalist beauty of the desert by itself, but then these <laughs> giant neon stacks of boulders juxtaposed against that minimalist background. Ooh. <laughs> to me, that's like absurdism or surrealism at its finest. And I took this to be kind of a statement on Las Vegas, you know, crazy neon towers in the middle of a desert. But then I was reading up on this uh, in preparation for this video and apparently he did one of these in Miami too. So I guess it's not really meant to be a statement on Las Vegas itself. He just wanted to stack a bunch of pretty rocks. Anyway, this exhibit was only supposed to be here for two years, but it's already been here for like, gosh, I want to say like seven years now. And you can see that it's very popular. And dare I say, it's probably the most popular attraction in all of fabulous Jean, Nevada. So I hope you enjoyed this brief but fascinating tour of Jean. I mean, for a city with zero population, I sure found it interesting. I mean, it's not Vegas and it's not even prim, but for what it is, I think Jean is all right.